How's it going everybody? I'm the Poka Gavana and welcome back to Doki Doki. And as a shift from last time's mood, hopefully we can actually make cupcakes this time. This would be a lot better. Before long, the whole kitchen is a mess. Spoons, dirty bowls, flour, ow! Spilled fluid and plastic bags strewn. I am too big for this friggin'. I don't know what I want to. What, what this is called right now. It's like. What do you call a desk? Desk. Uh, spilled fluid and plastic bags are strewn about every countertop. I hit the wrong button. That's starting out strong. Alright, here we go. There we go. No more mistakes from here on out. Just flawless. The mixer isn't big enough to make all the batter at once, so we've had to do, do it several times. Meanwhile, Natsuki is babysitting all of my movements to make sure I don't mess up her precious baking. I mean, she might as well just make it herself then. Poco, where did you put the food coloring? The batter's going all over... Oh, going in the oven soon, so I need to fill the trays. I think it's still in the bag next to the table. What are you using it for? To color the batter, of course. I'm making each tray a different color. That way, even the flavors aren't different, everyone can still pick their favorite. Well, that's a cute idea. Are we doing anything like that with the icing? Do you want to? Uh, you're asking me? I don't really have a preference, so come on. You're not putting any heart into this at all. Can you at least try to have fun? Dude, we definitely need to put colors in those in the icing. It'll be great. I'm not really sure what Natsuki is trying to get out of me. It'll be like pretty patties, but for, um, cupcakes. Meanwhile, I see her separate the batter into smaller bowls and put a few drops of food coloring into each. That does look pretty cool. See? It's not like baking is just about following instructions. Uh, when you're as bad as bad at cooking as I am, trust me it is. The presentation is where you get to be creative and have the most fun. It's a million times more worth it in the end. If you just... Wait, what? It's a million times more worth it in the end if you... If just looking at it makes everyone's eyes light up. There we go. Like the ones you made on... Uh, made my first day. I recall Natsuki proudly presenting her cat-shaped cupcakes and Sayori and Monica's delight, delighted expressions. This is another 5.30 a.m. recording as a heads off. That's gonna be my excuse. 24-7. I actually forgot that they were shaped like cats. I wonder if I can make Natsuki proud like that too. Yeah. Maybe I will use f the food coloring then. Sounds like you're starting to understand. Just make sure you completely finish mixing the icing before you mess with the food coloring. Yeah, it's getting there. We were using the electric mixer for the batter, so I got stuck with got stuck with a whisk and a huge bowl for the icing. The icing's still all lumpy. Are you even trying? Well, yeah. Let's it'll just take a little longer. Jeez, I'll be here all night if you do it like that. Here, look. Natsuki grabs a whisk from me and uses her other hand to tilt the bowl back. I'm getting a ton of crackling on my headset. As a heads up, I've dropped these things a thousand times. Let's see if I can mess with that. A little bit better. You really need to beat the crap out of it. Oh, okay. After a few seconds, the consistency of the icing has already improved. See? As if to emphasize, Nats Natsuki sticks a finger in the icing and pops it in her mouth. I reluctantly start to do the same. Oh, I don't get any icing, evident. Natsuki suddenly grabs my wrist. I don't want your gross fingers in my icing. Your icing? Hmm? Are you forgetting who did all this work? <laughs> I start to fight back, trying to inch my finger toward the bowl. Don't make me beat the crap out of you next. Oh, okay. I'd like to see you try. Bring it. I push harder, just enough for my finger to reach the icing. I triumphantly scoop some with my finger just as Natsuki tugs with all her might. The force of Natsuki pulling me causes me to stumble, making her stumble in turn. Gross. You got out of my face. Well, I mean, yeah. Whose fault is that? There's a big glob of icing on Natsuki's cheek. She tries to reach it with her tongue, but it's too far away. Jeez. You know what? Take this. Natsuki instead wipes it off 
with her finger before shoving her finger toward my own face. You wish. I'm faster. I grab her wrist with my hand before it reaches my face. Natsuki tries to use her other hand to fight back, but I grab that one as well. Stop. Not until you apologize for calling me gross. I... Yeah, no, uh, it was entirely me that was called gross, I guess. Fine, fine. I'm sorry for calling you gross. You know I didn't mean it. It's just fun seeing you react to it. You do that to me all the time, you know? Saying dumb things just to get a reaction out of me? You really shouldn't tease girls like that. Is that so? In that case, I probably shouldn't do this either. I take Natsuki's finger and put it on my mouth, licking off the icing. What? Did you seriously just... Natsuki is so surprised that she can't even figure out how to get mad at me. Her face is entirely red. Poco, you really shouldn't do that kind of thing to girls unless you really like them. You know that, right? What kind of question is she asking me, just like that? How did the mood turn to this so quickly? I... Natsuki gazes at me in silence. I notice her shallow breaths. Why am I starting to feel dizzy? The icing was poisoned! Out of nowhere, the fire alarm starts going off. Natsuki rushes over to the oven. Is something burning? I thought you didn't put the cupcakes in yet. No wonder. You left a dirty tray in there, dummy. How could you make a mistake like that? You should have checked before turning the oven on. Don't blame me for your mistakes, jeez. Natsuki uses an oven mitt to grab the blackened tray out of the oven. She sets it on top of the stove. In another moment, the fire alarm stops. Oh, okay, I thought I was going to say the fire erupts. That would have been insane. Anyway, I'm putting them in the oven now. Yeah. The tension from the moment before still lingers over our heads. But the moment... Oh, she has a little cat on her shirt. I didn't notice that earlier. That's damn cute. But the moment has already been lost. I watch Natsuki slide the cupcake trays into the oven. Then I reluctantly pick up the whisk and continue with the icing like nothing ever happened. Ah, that smells so good. Evidently burning cupcake smells good. The cupcakes are ready to be pulled out of the oven. As soon as Natsuki opens the oven door, a blast of sweet-smelling warm air fills the room. Look at how cute they all are. Look at- yeah, wait, wait. Look at how cute they all look. All look. I was close that time. She proudly shows off the different colored cupcakes in each of the trays. They'll look even better once we add the icing. Not like you need to tell me that. I brought decorating stuff, so I hope you can get creative. Here, scoop the icing into these bags. Natsuki hands me some plastic bags. I have these nozzles that'll make it look nice and fluffy. This one can even make flowers. We probably won't be using it this time, though. What's this one for? I picked up one of the nozzles that has a much thinner tip than the others. That one's really thin, so you should use it to make stripes or other patterns. But you can also use it to write stuff on a cake. Like, happy birthday, or whatever. Oh, I see. That gives me an idea, actually. Well, it's a lit- it's a literature event, right? We can make it more literature themed by writing different- by writing a different word on each of the cupcakes. It would be fun to see people choose their cupcakes based on a word they like. Yeah, how's that for creative? I was kind of expecting you to say something really stupid. But that's actually a really cute idea, so... Ha ha. Maybe I'm getting it from you. What's that supposed to mean? I'm not cute. Come on. We're not at school. Nobody's judging. You can't dress and act like this and not expect me to think, not expect me to think that you are cute. Well, Natsuki's voice trails off. Same with you. Did you just say something? No, nothing. Let's just do the icing. Natsuki picks up the pace and fastens a nozzle onto each of the bags. There's a lot to do, so we shouldn't be wasting time. Here, I'll show you how to do it. Without giving me a chance to think about be Without giving me a chance to think about before. Oh wait, I had that right. I must have double guessing myself on this. Natsuki quickly moves on! She shows me how to apply the icing, and then we each get to work. When we're finally finished, Natsuki puts them all side by side to admire our work. Look at how pretty they are together. Yeah, they are, aren't they? I wish I could have one. I wish I could have one now. Well, there's no reason you can't, right? 
I don't see any harm in it. Well, yeah, but... My dad's making dinner tonight, so I really need to save my appetite. Siori's the exact opposite in that regard. If she was here, she'd probably be down 10 cupcakes already. And she'd still eat dinner. Come on, that's just unhealthy. Besides, when my dad cooks, I need to eat as much as I can. And anyways... I was hoping we could have time for manga, but I need to be home for dinner. Already? That's a shame. It's your fault for working so slowly. You should have thought about that. It's not like you'll always have this chance. Man. As usual, Natsuki places the blame on me. You can bring the cupcakes tomorrow, right? If you and Sayori each carry some, then you can probably do it in one trip. Yeah, I can do that. Don't worry, I won't let her eat any. I wish she would listen to me the way she listens to you. Yeah. I again think back to the conversation I had with Sayori earlier today. I was trying to use the cupcakes to avoid this thought, man! I felt so helpless. Sayori always does listen to me. But at that point, it felt like she couldn't listen to me at all. Okay, I'm all packed up. Good work today. You too. I'll walk you out, I guess. Just like that, Natsuki is already about to leave. It feels like the afternoon went by in a flash. More than that... Did I even take the opportunity to get closer to her like I wanted? Well, I guess I'll be off then. Thanks for all the help and everything. I'll see you tomorrow. Wait, Natsuki! What you said before about not always having this chance. It doesn't have to be that way at all. I had fun today. You showed me how fun baking could be, like you wanted. But aside from that, you can come over anytime, okay? I think that if possible, I'd like to spend more time like... More time like this. If you want to read manga or go out somewhere... Uh... Do you really mean that? Natsuki looks at me tensely, like she's trying to hide her expression. Yeah. I want to spend more time with you. Poco. I thought you only cared about getting this done. I'm sorry I had to leave so early today. I really don't want to, didn't want to. I would really stay here longer if I could. I feel the same, oh, wait, 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 was that my line? Yeah, well. I feel the same way as you, so Natsuki suddenly gets closer to me. I'm gonna get mugged. Wait, Natsuki! Sending inches from me, Natsuki looks up at me. Ah, I forgot she was short. I feel her finger gently clutch at the sides of my shirt as if holding on to me. Her rose-colored cheeks and matching eyes filled my vision along with her slightly parted lips. What's happening? Uh, I believe as the said by Sebastian, kiss the girl. My head starts to go dizzy as I feel her soft breaths against me. I felt it. Oh, no, maybe I was wrong. For a while now. Natsuki suddenly jumps back. Sayori? Oh, shoot. What is good, my dude? Hi, Poco. Sayori? Just now, we weren't... It's super awkward when there's no music, man. It's okay, Poco. I just stopped by to say hi. Well, you should have come a little earlier. I'm already on my way out, so... Aw, oh, really? That's too bad. Yeah, well, I'll still see you at the festival tomorrow, so it's fine. Just don't eat any cupcakes before then. Anyway, later. Clearly flustered, Natsuki hurries off and Sayori waves goodbye. Sayori? I thought you didn't want to come over today. Uh, well, I tried staying in my room, but my imagination was being really mean to me. So I had to come here and see it for myself. See what? What are you talking about? You know, how much fun you were having with Natsuki. And how close you got to her. Makes me really happy. Ah, uh, that you made such good friends! That's all that matters to me. Tears start to fall down Sayori's face. Yeah! That's all that matters to me. Why am I feeling this way, Poco? I'm supposed to be happy for you. Why does it feel like my heart is splitting in half? It hurts so much. Everything hurts so much. This would be so much better if I could just disappear. Okay, uh, yeah, I'm with you. Uh, not with that, but with this. Sorry, don't say that. It's true, Poco. If I wasn't here, then you wouldn't have to waste your sympathy on me. You wouldn't have to put up with me being selfish. 
Monica was right. I should just... Monica? Monica was right about what? Sorry. What I said before is true. I'm not going to let this continue. Caring about you like this isn't the burden... Isn't the burden your mind is making it out to be. It's something that makes me happy. It's something that I wouldn't trade for anything else. So even if it takes an entire lifetime, I'm going to be by your side until you don't feel any more pain. But, but... Sorry looks away. I put my hand on her shoulder to reassure her. I'm scared, Poco. I'm really scared. Wait, what the fuck did Monica say? What are you scared of, Sayori? I'm scared that... I'm scared that I might like you more than you like me. Sayori, it's true, isn't it? I was weak and started to like you too much. I did this to myself. Is that what she said to you? Poco, I like you so much that I want to die. Okay, well, let's go back to the no. That's how I feel. And, and, that's enough, Sayori. I don't want you to hurt anymore. I slide my hand down Sayori's arm and squeeze her hand in my own. Do you remember how I said I always know what's best for you? Do you still believe me? Wordlessly, Sayori nods. Even if you don't understand all of your own feelings, I know what you need the most right now, and that's what I'm going to give to you. Ah, shit! I wonder if the game knows I'm saving. Like, it's just like, aha, I know what you did there. Nice try. Oh, okay. In visual novels, there's usually like routes to go down and everything. And it's generally best to have one character. Or else you're going to end up all school dazed. Uh, you don't have to look that up, just it ends bad. And... My character's already super involved. With Natsuki. So... I don't know how this will go. I'm gonna stick on the path though. We're gonna see how that goes. I blame Matt. You'll always be my dearest friend. What you need most is for things to be like they've always been. Monica told me the truth. She told me how much happier you seemed after I joined the club. I know you're struggling with some really difficult feelings right now, but please trust me that I know what's best and what will make you happy in the end. I promise I'll help get things back the way- Honestly, I think she needs professional help, my dude. I- I see. Sayori forces a smile through an incredibly pained expression. Is this what it feels like to get stabbed in the chest? I should write a poem about this. Sayori, it's okay. This is just my punishment, remember? For being so selfish. So please. Please don't worry about these stupid feelings. I know you're right. I knew this whole time that there's no happiness down that path. That's why I came here. Just so I could get the answer I needed to hear. And the other thing. You're also right that I just wanted to go back to the way it was. I realize that now. You really do know me better than anyone, Poco. I'll trust you with anything. Anything at all. So... Sayori's smile finally breaks. All of a sudden, she turns around and drops to her knees. Alright, it is 5 a.m. I am not yelling or screaming. Ah! Ah! It's high and high. Clutching her head with both hands, she screams as loudly as she can. I'm so shocked that I don't know how to react. It's a tough situation, man. Saria looks over her shoulder and flashes me one more weak smile before turning around and running off. Siori. Uh, I'm left helplessly standing in front of my house. Why am I feeling so horrible about this? There's nothing more I could have done. The most I can do is support Sayori. Sayori. Through her feelings and help her on the right on the path that's right. 
But I'm having as much trouble understanding Sayori's feelings as she is. Even though I can comfort her, I keep wondering if I should be doing something more or something different. I know these thoughts will continue to plague me until things are back the way they were. I'm going to give it everything I've got. Sayori will always be my dearest friend. And I'll do whatever it takes to put a smile on her face every day. Alright, but what the fuck did Monica say? We're going to gloss that over or some shit? Swearing is 100% appropriate for this, by the way, okay? You know, I know, we know. Cool. It's the day of the festival. Of all days, I expected this to be the one where I'd be walking to school with Sayori. But Sayori isn't answering her phone. I considered going to her house to wake her up, but decided that's a little too much. Meanwhile, the preparations for the event should be nearly complete. Does that mean I'm going to have to take two trips with these things? I managed to carry all cupcakes myself by carefully stacking two trays. You have mush the frosting, dude. Natsuki is already uh, texting up a storm, but I can't respond thanks to my hands being full. Funnily enough, I probably feel the same way as Natsuki about the event. I'm more excited for it to be over so I can spend time with Sayori and Natsuki at the festival. But knowing Monica, I'm pretty sure the event will be great too. Are we also going to gloss over the fact that there's an entire another member of this club? You know, Yuri? You're the first one here. Thanks for being early. That's funny, I thought at least Yuri would be here by now. Oh, okay, there we go. Monica is placing little booklets on each of the desks in the classroom. They must be the ones she prepared that has all the poems we're performing. In the end, I found a random poem online that I thought Monica would like and submitted it. So that's the one I'll be performing. I'm surprised you didn't bring Sayori with you. Yeah, she overslept again. That dummy. Why is there no music for this? You think that on days this important, she'd try a little harder. I say that, but I suddenly remember what Sayori told me yesterday. And I suddenly feel awful knowing it's not nearly that simple for her. I only said it because it's the way I'm used to thinking. But maybe I should have gone to wake her up after all. You should take a little responsibility for her, Poco. I mean, especially after your exchange with her yesterday. How the hell do you know about that? You kind of left her hanging this morning, you know? Exchange? Monica, you know about that? Of course I do. I'm the club president, after all. But I stammer embarrassed. Did Siori really tell her about it that quickly? About how I basically turned down her confession? That makes me really seem like a, the bad guy here. But I'm the one who knows what's best for her, right? Yeah, totally. Jeez. You don't know the full story at all, so don't worry. I probably know a lot more than you think. Monica is being as friendly as usual, but for some reason I felt a chill down my spine after hearing that. Hey, do you want to check out the pamphlets? They came out really nice. Yeah, sure. I grabbed one of the pamphlets laid out on the desk. Oh yeah, they really did. Something like this will definitely help people take the club more seriously. I thought so too. I flipped through the pages. Each member's poem is neatly printed on its own page, giving it an almost professional feel. I recognize Natsuki and Yuri's poems from the ones they performed during our practice. What's this? I flipped to Sayori's poem. It's different from the one she practiced. It's one that I haven't read before. Percent. Get out of my head, 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 but a poem is never actually finished. It just stops moving. Alright. Get out of my head before I do what I know is best for you. Get out of my head before I listen to everything she said to me. Get out of my head before I show you how much I love you. Get out of my head before I finish writing this poem. Ah. What is this? Reading the poem, I get a pit in my stomach. Yeah. Poco, what's wrong? 
Uh, do you not... I mean, you typed this, man. I'm assuming you typed this. You at least put it in the pamphlet. Alright, anything that happens is also on you. Like, we should be reporting this to somebody. I think. I don't, I don't know how to handle this situation. But, uh, what do you even do? I, I guess you should report it to someone. I mean, I'm like this, but that's all done. This poem feels completely different from everything else that he's written. Uh, well, some of the stuff is a bit more, but definitely this is a little off the cliff. Yeah. No, um, you know, off the path of the norm. More than that, I changed my mind. I'm going to go get Sayori, so... Alright. Try not to take too long, okay? I quickly leave the classroom. Don't strain yourself. Monica calls out to me. Sorry, calls out after me. There we go. I quicken my pace. What was I thinking? I should have tried a little bit harder for Sayori. It's not a big deal to at least wait for her or help her wake up. Even the simple gesture of walking her to school makes her really happy. Besides, I told her yesterday that things would be the same as they always have been. That's all she needs and what I want to give to her. I reach Sayori's house and knock that- that's the same house as my house. I feel like they use the same image. I don't expect an answer since she's not picking up her phone either. Like yesterday, I open the door and let myself in. Sayori. She's- she really is a heavy sleeper. I swallow. I can't believe I ended up doing this after all. Waking her up in her own house. Isn't that more like something a boyfriend- Alright, so I see pictures. Because I- I- I go online. I exist in the world, and spoilers exist in the world, especially in a game that came out a couple months ago. Wait, a few months ago. I'm really hoping this isn't what I think it is. In any case, it just feels right. Outside Sayori's room, I knock on her door. Sayori, wake up, you dummy. There's no response. I really didn't want to have to enter a room like this. Kind of a breach of privacy, and the fact that it's a black screen with absolutely no music does not make it any better. But she really leaves me no choice. I gently open the door. Ah! Okay. An exception has occurred. File scripts. Chapter 5 run by a line set trace back for text. And Yuri popped in over there. Okay. I don't know why Yuri popped in over there, but okay. What the hell? Yeah. What the hell? Is this a nightmare? It has to be. This isn't real. There's no way this can be real. Sayori wouldn't do this. Everything was normal up until a few days ago. I mean, supposedly they've been kind of dealing with this their whole life. That's why I can't believe what my eyes are showing me. I suppress the urge to vomit. Nah, dude, if you gotta vomit, vomit. Just yesterday, I told Sayori I would be there for her. I told her I know what's best and that everything will be okay, then why? Why did she do this? How can I be so helpless? What did I do wrong? Turning down her confession? That has to be what pushed her over the edge. Her agonized scream still echoes in my ears. Why did I do that to her when she needed me the most? Why was I so selfish? This is my fault. My swarm- If we're not gonna mention the fact that evidently Monica said something to her earlier. That's just- No? Okay. I guess you didn't see the whole Yuri thing in the bottom either. Okay! Thanks, Matt. Also, thanks, Julian. My swarming thoughts keep telling me everything I could have done to prevent this. If I just spent more time with her, walked her to school, and gave her what I know she wanted out of our relationship. Then I could have prevented this. I know I could have prevented this. Screw the literature club. Screw the festival. I just lost my best friend. Someone I grew up with. She's gone forever now. Nothing I can do to bring her back. This isn't some game where I can reset and try something different. Ah, well. 
Sir! Believe it or not! You know? Welcome to the second clue, I think it was. Or literature tip. Save and load. That's a fucked up xylophone. I only had one chance and I wasn't careful enough. And now I'll carry this guilt with me until I die. Nothing in my life is worth more than hers. But I still couldn't do what she needed from me. And now... Now I can never take it back. Never. 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 Ah, oh, fuck! It wants me to load! Oh, God. Let's save first and see what happens. Alright. Load game. Fatal error characters are actually... Is missing or corrupt? Starting new game. What? The shit? I see an annoying girl running toward me from the distance, waving her arms in the air like she's totally oblivious to any attention she might draw to herself. That girl is... My neighbor and good friend since we were children. You know, the kind of friend you'd never see yourself making today, but... Just kind of works out because you've known each other for so long. The music is even more fun. It's not even my headphones this time! We used to walk to school together on days like this, but starting around high school, she would oversleep more and more frequently, and I would get tired of waiting up. But if she's going to chase after me like this, I almost feel better off running away. However, I just sigh and idle in front of the crosswalk and like, catch up to me. Oh, it's Yuri and Monica. And one fucked up. I don't want to be near my goddamn screen if it's going to do shit like that. It's an ordinary school day like any other. Yeah, go school! Mornings are usually the worst, being surrounded by couples and friend groups walking to school together. Meanwhile, I've always walked to school alone. I always tell myself it's about time to meet some girls or something like that. But I have no motivation to join any clubs! Ah! I am purposely content just getting by on the average while spending my free time on games and anime. There's always the anime club, but it's not like there would be any girls in it anyway. This is not okay. The school is as ordinary as ever and it's over before I knew it. After I packed up my things, I stared blankly at a wall looking for an ounce of motivation. Clubs? There really aren't any that interest me this time. Oh, it's not even playing the lines for them. Currently, for Sayori. Or blah, blah, blah. Basically, most of them would probably be way too demanding for me that- Oh, wait, maybe it's not. Maybe I'm just not paying enough. Okay. Well, I got all a perfect memory, okay? I guess I have no choice but to start with the anime club. Okay, here we go. Poco. Monica! Oh, that's surprising. Oh my goodness, I totally didn't expect to see you here. It's been a while, right? Yeah, it has. Monica smiles sweetly. Do we know each other? We rarely talked, but we were in the same class last year. Monica was probably the most popular girl in class. Smart, beautiful, athletic. Basically, completely out of my league. So having her smile at me so genuinely feels a little... What are you coming here for anyway? I've just been looking for supplies to use for my club. Do you know if there's any construction paper in here? Or markers? I guess you could check the closet! The fuck did she say? You're in debate club, right? About that. I actually quit the debate club. Really? You quit? Yeah. To be honest, I can't stand all the politics around the major club. And why was Yuri popping up in the freaking corruption shit too? What is up? I mean, don't tell me. But, I mean, I, I'm probably not going to edit these until, like, Friday anyway, and I'm recording what is today. Technically Monday? So I'll probably already be trying to figure it out, but... Ah! I said I was trying not to scream. I bet you I freaking screamed during that, too. Okay. To be honest, I can't stand all the politics around the major clubs. It feels like nothing but arguing about the budget and publicity and how to prepare for events. I'd much rather take something I personally enjoy and make something special than my feet are freezing now. In any case, what club did you decide to join? 
Actually, I'm starting a new one. A literature club! Literature, really? That sounds kind of dull. How many members do you have so far? <laughs> it's kind of embarrassing, but there's only three of us so far. It's really hard to find new members for something so boring. That sounds so boring. Well, I can see that. But it's really not boring at all, you know? Literature can be anything. Reading, writing, poetry. I mean, one of my members even keeps her manga collection in the club room. That's okay! <laughs> I guess there's other things to worry about now, though. Wait, really? Yeah, it's funny, right? She always insists that manga is literature, too. Hey, whoa, screw you, don't... It is. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Alright, there's words with those pictures. It's literature. I mean, she's not wrong, I guess. And besides, a member's a member, right? Did Monica say she? Hey, Poco. By any chance, are you still looking for a club to join? Yeah! Alright, I guess so. In that case, is there any chance you could do me a big favor? I won't ask you to join, but if you could at least visit my club, it would make me really happy. Please? I am shaking. Yup, that's a thing. I guess I have no reason to refuse. Besides, how could I ever refuse someone like Monica? Sure, I guess I could check it out. Awesome! You're really sweet, Poco, you know that? It's nothing, really. Shall we go, then? I look forward to the materials another time. Wait, what? I'll look for the materials another time. Oh, gotcha. You're more important. And thus, today marks the day I sold my soul to Monica and her irresistible smile. Yay! Don't even get cupcakes this time! I timidly follow Monica across the school and upstairs, a section of the school I rarely visit, being generally used for third year classes and activities. Monica, full of energy, swings open the classroom door. What's up? Nah, I'm back. And I brought a new guest with me. Girl 1. A guest. Seriously, you brought a boy? Way to kill the atmosphere. Don't be mean, Natsuki! But anyway, welcome to the club, Poco. All words escape me in this situation. This club is, is full of incredibly cute girls. So let me guess, you're Monica's boyfriend, right? No, I'm not. Natsuki. The girl with a sour attitude whose name is apparently Natsuki. And... Is one... Oh, wait, wait. The girl with the sour attitude whose name is apparently Natsuki is one I don't recognize. Her small figure makes me think she's probably a first year. Anyway, this is Natsuki, energetic as usual. And this is Yuri, the vice president. Nice to meet you. Oh, okay, you're vice president now. Uh, okay. And that seat did not sit well with some people. I recommend we all piece the shit out. Yuri, who appears to have comparably more mature, to appears comparably more mature and timid, seems to have a hard time keeping up with someone like Natsuki. Yeah, it's nice to meet both of you. So I ran into Poco in a classroom, and he decided to come check out the club. Isn't that great? Wait, Monica, don't tell me you... Didn't I tell you to let me know in advance before you brought in anyone new? I was going to, well, you know. Yeah, man. I would have shared the cupcakes. I never forget that, but I just happened to run into him. In any case, I should at least make some tea, right? Yeah, that would be great. Why don't you come sit, Poco? I'm gonna fucking die! The girls have a few desks arranged in the form of a table. Yuri walks up to the corner of the room and opens the closet. Meanwhile, Monica and Natsuki sit across from each other. Still feeling awkward, I take a, sit next to, a seat next to Monica. So, I know you really didn't plan on coming here, but we'll make sure you feel right at home, okay? As president of the Literature Club, it's my duty to make the club fun and exciting for everyone. I'm surprised there aren't more people in the club yet. It must be hard to start a new club! You could put it that way. Not many people are very interested in putting out all the effort to start something brand new. Especially when it's something that doesn't grab your attention, like literature. You have to work hard to convince people they are both fun and worthwhile. 
but it makes school events like the festival that much more important. I'm confident that we can all really grow this club before we graduate. Right, Natsuki? Natsuki, run. Well, I guess. Natsuki reluctantly agrees. Such a different- I mean, Natsuki at least didn't pop up inside that flashing image thing. Alright, Yuri, I don't know what the shit she's on about. But sh that was sketchy. And Amonica literally took the spot. Oh, uh, Sayori. So she is definitely culprit number one. Yuri's not at the hook either. That's some suspicious shit, man. Once again, swearing is justified. Monica must have worked really hard just to find these two. Yuri returns to the table carrying a tea set. She carefully places a teacup in front of each of us before setting down the teapot in the middle. You, tea you keep a whole tea set in the classroom? Don't worry, the teachers gave us permission. After all, doesn't a hot cup of tea help you enjoy a good book? I'll give you that. I guess. Don't let yourself get intimidated. Yuri's just trying to impress you. That's not... Insulted, Yuri looks away. I mean that, you know... I believe you. Well, tea and reading might not be a pastime for me, but... I at least enjoy tea. I'm glad. Yuri faintly smiles to herself in relief. So, Poco, what kind of things do you like to read? Uh, well... Considering how little I've read these past few days, I don't really have a good way for answering that. Manga? I mutter quietly to myself, half-jokingly. Natsuki's head suddenly perks up. Manga bros! Yay! It looks like she wants to say something, but she keeps quiet. Not much of a reader, I guess. Well, that can change. What am I saying? I spoke without thinking after seeing Yuri's sad smile. Anyway, what about you, Yuri? Well, let's see. Yuri traces the rim of her teacup with her finger. My favorites are usually novels that build deep and complex fantasy worlds. The level of creativity and craftsmanship behind them is amazing to me. And telling a good story in such a foreign world is equally impressive. Yuri goes on clearly passionate about her reading. She seemed so reserved and timid since the moment I walked in, but it's obvious the way her eyes light up when she finds her comfort in the world of books, not people. But you know, I like a lot of things. Stories with deep psychological elements usually immerse me as well. Isn't it amazing how a writer can so deliberately take advantage of your own lack of imagination and completely throw you for a loop? Is that supposed to be foreshadowing? Ah! Because, I mean... Once again, I got spoiled on the whole uh, uh, unfortunate end of Sayori. I, I kind of figured that that was coming up because I, I saw a picture of that before. The glitch, the character not found, the restart to the beginning, Monica taking the place, Yuri popping up in the bottom right when that happened, the music changing. I didn't even think of that. Anyway, I've been reading a lot of horror lately. Really? And... Ah, uh, I read a horror book once. I played one too. I desperately grasped something that I can relate to at the minimum level. Minimal level. At this rate, Yuri might as well be having conversation with a rock. I'd expect that from you, Yuri. It suits your personality. Is that so? Really, if a story makes me think or takes me to another world, then I can I really can't put it down. Surreal horror is often very successful at changing the way you look at the world, if only for a brief moment. I hate horror. You and me both, bud. But oh, why's that? Well, I just Nasuki's eyes dart over to me for a split second. Never mind. That's right, you usually like to write about cute things, don't you, Natsuki? What? What gives you that idea? Well, you left a piece of scrap paper behind last club meeting. And it looked like you were working on a poem called... Don't say it out loud. And give it back. 
Fine, fine. Natsuki, you write your own poems? Well, I guess sometimes. Why do you care? I think that's impressive. Why don't you share them sometime? No. Natsuki averts her eyes. You, you wouldn't like them. Ah, not very, not a very confident writer yet. I understand how Natsuki feels. Sharing that level of writing takes more than just confidence. The truest form of writing is writing to oneself. You must be willing to open up to your readers, exposing your vulnerabilities, and showing even the deepest reaches of your heart. Do you have writing experience too, Yuri? I, I know what this feels like now. This feels like in friggin... Um... Um... What was it called? ReZero! With the frickin' whale thing! Uh, spoilers if you haven't seen ReZero yet. One, why haven't you seen ReZero yet? But when it eats... Frickin' Rem... And then... Poof! That's what this has... Like, that... I'm imagining that's what this feels like. Just with glitches, man. It's not cool. Do you have writing experience too, Yuri? Maybe if you share some of your work, you can set an example and help Natsuki feel comfortable enough to share hers. I guess it's the same for you, Yuri. We all sit in silence for a moment. Hey, I just got an idea. How about this? You're... Natsuki and Yuri look quizzically at Monica. Let's all go home and write a poem of our own. Then next time we meet, we'll all share them with each other. That way everyone is even. Is Monica going to take the place of Sayori in the book for writing poems? Or is it just going to be an empty space and only have answers for Yuri and Natsumi? Ah! I mean, I thought it was a good idea. Well, I think you're right, Monica. We should probably start finding activities for all of us to participate in together. I did decide to take on the responsibility of Vice President, after all. I need to do my best to nurture the club, as well as its members. Besides, now that we have a new member, it seems like a good step for us to take. Do you agree as well, Poco? Hold on, there's still one problem. What's that? Now we've reached the most important topic. I bluntly came forth with what's been on my mind the entire time. I never said I would join this club. Y'all making assumptions and shiz? You know what they say, to assume is to make an ass out of you and me. Monica may have convinced me to stop by, but I never made any decision. I still have other clubs I want to look at, and uh, anime club kinda beats murder the shit out of people club. I lose my train of thought. All three girls stare back at me with dejected eyes, but I'm sorry, I thought, hmm. Uh, the girls exchange glances before Monica turns back to me. I guess I need to tell you the truth, Poco. The thing is, we don't have enough members yet to form an official club. Well, maybe that wouldn't be a problem if you didn't murder the shit out of someone. Which, I get it, they were in kind of a bad place to begin with, but I'm pretty sure that still counts as freaking murder. I think. At minimum assisted suicide. Yet yeah, it's not okay, is what it is. We haven't... Fuck your club. We need four. And I've been trying really hard to find new members, but Literature Club was kind of dumb of an idea for me to start. If I'm gonna do this anyway. And if I don't find one more member before the festival... I'm defenseless against these girls. How am I supposed to make a clear-headed decision when it's like this? Alright, but if you're just gonna murder another person anyway, Monica... Then, uh, won't you be down a member anyway? How am I supposed to make a clear decision when it's like this? I feel terrible for letting everyone down in the situation, and besides, the club itself seems pretty relaxed. So if writing poems is a price I need to pay in order to spend every day with these beautiful girls. Right. Okay, I've decided then. I'll join the literature club. One by one, the girls' eyes light up. Oh my goodness, really? You really mean that, Poco? Yeah! It could be fun, right? You really did scare me for a moment. I mean, if you really just left after all, this would be, I would be super pissed. Poco, I'm so happy. We can become an official club now. Thank you so much for this, you're really amazing. I'll do everything I can to give you a great time, okay? 
Alright, I'm gonna need like 10 meters of space from you. All times. Thanks, I guess. Okay, everyone. I think with that we can officially end today's meeting on a good note. Everybody remember tonight's assignment? Write a poem to bring to the next meeting so we can all share. Monica looks over at me once more. Poco, I look forward to seeing how you express yourself. Eehee, ha 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 Yeah. I, can I really impress the class star Monaco with my mediocre writing skills? I already feel the anxiety welling up inside of me. Meanwhile, the girls continue to chit chat as Yuri cleans up the tea set. I guess I'll be on my way then. Okay. I'll see you tomorrow then. Can't wait. With that, I depart the classroom and make my way home. The whole way, my mind wanders back and forth between three girls, Natsuki, Yuri, and of course, Monica. Will I really be happy spending every day after school in Literature Club? Perhaps I'll have a chance to grow closer to one of these girls. Alright, I just need to make the most of my circumstance, and I'm sure good fortune will find me. And I guess that starts with writing a poem tonight. You have unlocked a special poem. Would you like to read it? Uh, I'm gonna close my eyes, okay? Stare at the doctor reveal a special message. I'm not staring at Jack Dick. Alright, I'm actually gonna stare- I'm actually gonna look. Oh yeah, there's only two of them! Oh my god, did I miss something? I wasn't actually looking. Alright, I'm gonna have to look back in the recording. Holy shit. Alright, until next time, have a wonderful day. Poco Kifana out.